Down in Otago, it's not rain, but snow falling from the sky. So we're going to head up the Lindus Pass and see what the uh, road and snow conditions are like. Senior Constable Graham Butter loves this winter wonderland. A spectacular place, though. Where else would you want to live? This is so cool. Just uh, looking around here, like, far out, this is just awesome. You know, there's a reason that people stop at this lookout and take photos and walk up the hills and stuff. There's normally probably another foot more snow here, but uh, super cool. He's tasked with making sure snow is the only thing drifting off the road. Middle of school holidays, so there's a lot of people around. Kiwis all out on the road behaving badly. Try something new, New Zealand has Kiwis getting out of their comfort zones, but that shouldn't extend their driving beyond their abilities. Our roads are some of the most challenging you'll find. Definitely winter driving conditions. And up the top here, it's like a gravel road. There's that much grit mixed with ice and snow. Look at the road away down through there. It makes for a pretty picture, but it's not long before Graham gets the heads up. Someone's come a cropper. T from DCC, Civil One, members of the public are helping me out, just looking off duty for them. Awesome. This car's just buggered. Uh, looks like at least one front tire is flat at the wrong angle. Oh, yep. Yeah. Through the thick fog, the stranded motorist eventually comes into sight. Hello, how are you? Where are you going to? Uh, Christchurch. Christchurch? Right. Wh whose car is it? No. Yours? You, you guys are all right, though? Do you have insurance? Before, sir, they have, but uh, I don't know now. It's you don't know? Well, obviously, we can't leave it here. We're going to have to get a tow truck. The weather's not improving, they're losing light, and there's no signal. Getting the car out of here could come down to the wire. The driver, who already slid off the road into the wire, agrees. We have a appointment for the doctor, so that's why I will go to the trash house. Yeah, yeah. OK. Yeah, but the problem now is I'm going to the crash house. We don't have a car for that. Can you tell me what happened? It's too much slow, sir, but yeah. uh, the problem is too much slippery here. When I yeah. So you've come round the corner, bang into there, and then yeah. round. Can you pay for a tow truck? It's OK to... Yeah, you should be able to do that. It'll be a twizzle. So I'm going to ask for a quote how much it is. So they'll come and pick you up, because you've got a lot of gear in here. Graham can't get them to Christchurch four hours away, but Twizel will have accommodation and a warm meal. Do you have a driver's license with you? Oh, that's only a Philippine. Uh, sorry? A uh, what? That's only Philippines. Oh, okay, Philippines. How long have you been in New Zealand for? Five. But uh, I tried to. Five years? Yeah. Well, that's not good. No license could be an insurance problem, and there's a bit to put right. We'll sort this tow truck out and we'll see how much it's going to cost. You're going to have to fix the fence that you broke. The fence will be repaired later. Right now, Graham calls the towie to get the car off the road before nightfall. Tow truck will come in about an hour. Um, he'll pick your whole car up and everything in it, take you to Twizel, and then you may have to stay in Twizel tonight. I'm just going to take some photos before it gets dark, yeah. and then we'll go from there. Cool. You've only got probably eight inches either side of your wheels. As you can see the skid marks, at the stage he's lost it, so he's actually been on the wrong side of the road. So that line on the centre is actually his passenger side. Graham takes photos in case they're needed later. People come through here, and if they're not concentrating, they get slightly offline, the way it goes. That grit, and certainly once a lot of cars have gone over, it just turns into marbles and that's exactly what they've done. They come around there, they've possibly been following the front vehicle a little bit too, too close and not seen the road, and they've got a little bit wide on the corner, and then next in the steering would have gone light, and he sort of panicked, hit the brakes, ran she goes. The driver was very lucky there was no one else coming the other way. But this isn't exactly a dream outcome for their planned trip to Christchurch. The friends will only get part of the way today. So you have nowhere to stay tonight? You got no way of getting to Christchurch? We'll get you that way anyway, at least you're another hour closer to, uh, to Christchurch. 
they will have a signal. I try to call my friend to get me here. This slip up has messed up his plans, but Graham knows it could have been worse. No one's hurt, apart from his pocket. He's lost his car, he's $570 for the tow, probably another five, $600 to fix the fence. He'll get billed for that. The tow truck arrives in the last of the day's light. Everyone and everything will get out of the pass soon. However beautiful it is, a temperature of minus seven means it's no place to crash for the night, even when you've literally crashed. Some of New Zealand's busiest highways had humble beginnings. In 1871, a track was cut over the Hope Saddle in Te Tai o Arorere to ensure access between the forestry communities of Westport and Nelson. This track is known today as State Highway 6 and is still lined with acres of forestry. Senior Constable Alf Blair has just arrived at Clark Valley, where a fallen tree is blocking one side of the road. Cons NNH4. There seems to have been a tree fall park southbound lane on State Highway 6, uh, Clark Valley. Can you send um, a roading crew to remove it, please? I'm going to do the best I can to move what I can off and just sort of indicate to traffic to do this, to slow down. It's sort of like a waddle like a duck. This section of highway has a speed limit of 100 kilometres per hour. And for a vehicle travelling that speed, meeting a large piece of debris could have serious consequences. Oh, thanks, love. A worried member of the public stops to give Alf a hand. Thanks, you can shoot off now. Appreciate your help. One tree is off the road, but motorists are not out of the woods yet. We're getting trees blown over back in the forest. They're hit by the wind and they're crashing um, across, but not out onto the road. But multiple trees are dropping. With the wind increasing in strength, the possibility of another tree crashing onto the highway seems more and more likely. It's getting more dangerous. We've cleared the lane and we can slow traffic through that, but there's a chance that we've got trees that could drop back across the road. About four have already crashed through the forest while we're standing here clearing this debris. And there's another problem. The wind gusts are only getting stronger. With backup arriving, Elf has a chance to update comms with the unfolding situation. Roger, can you advise them that there's a possibility a tree will come back across the road? Uh, it's leaning against another tree that's holding it up, and the only direction it can go is onto the highway. And there's multiple trees in behind that that are currently falling. Alf shifts another 20 metres to clear the most threatening tree. But the news isn't good. They're even going back in here. So I'm going to move back further. I'm moving back another 100. I've got trees falling where I am now and behind me, so I'm moving back further. Do we need to consider closing that highway and putting in the yeah, if we blocked State Highway 6, the diversion would take approximately one hour to go around uh, for all traffic. We can go down um, to St Arnold and cut out on 63 back onto 6. Finally, roading contractors have arrived to assess the falling trees, and Alf can concentrate on traffic management. It's still a volatile situation. H7, some contractors coming your way. They're um, going to have a look, take some photos, and um, report it through to the foreman. And with the forecast not showing any respite from the high gusts, the decision is made to close the highway while the trees closest to the road are brought down. Alf has repositioned one last time to set up the detour a couple of kilometres north. Uh, I'd say they'll drop the tree that's uh, leaning hard and uh, it'll fall to the road and they'll clear it off the road uh, and then at that stage they may reopen the road but I think that Leaning tree is, is, a, is a massive challenge there. The problem trees are also challenging motorists' deadlines. Oh, okay. We've got to turn cars around, sorry. Okay. Yeah, we've got yeah, trees, no, no. trees coming down. <laughs> he has a meeting that he has to be at at 5 o'clock. 
so he's not going to make that really. But safety must come first. The contractors get to work felling tree after tree, so the main trunk line to the west coast is safe. The big leaners have been dropped, and they'll work on that site until it gets too dark, but they'll clear enough of the trees that are leaning to make it safe for uh, the highway to open later on this evening. So it's a big team effort, good result all round. Otago's got it all. Magnificent coastlines, beautiful farmland, and charming rural towns such as Milton. Senior Constable Jane Whitmore is cruising the main street where she's just spotted an unusual looking vehicle. Looks like a fairly interesting sort of car. I don't get those sort of around here. And um, just about to stop it for a license check. What a view. It's like a four wheeled Milton Hilton. How are we going? Good. Just admiring your car. Just admiring my car. Yeah. Have you got your ridge up to date on it? Yeah. Oh, OK, it's just showing it's expired at the moment. I just got it yesterday. Oh, that'll be why it hasn't shown through yet. He's not just taking his classic car for a cruise. <laughs> <laughs> it's Dad's car. Just take it around for booze he's with. <laughs> I don't know. So why has Dad pimped their ride? They've been at the 660 concert. I just went to the 660 in Eden last night. So I'm just cruising home back to Pocanoe. Does it have a TV? No. So does that work while you're moving along? Yeah. Oh, good evening. Yeah, well, you can't drive past many service stations. You've got to fill it up quite often. How much does it cost to fill up? Oh, about 160. Yep. But who cares? Mm. No, it's a good fun. Who says the girls and guys of Gore can't party like rock stars? While some are making a classy departure from Dunedin, others are in a hurry to get home from 660's hometown. I just found he was going a bit quick. Yeah, there he is, putting the brakes on there now. Get out and talk to them about that. Hello, guys. How are you going? <laughs> I was just having a wee look at you fellas, and yeah. look like you're building up for the big takeoff. Oh, okay? Yeah, yeah. So you did get a little bit quick. Are you guys coming back from 660 yeah. or something? Just like at the concert, this young driver's going to have to show some ID. Do you have your licence on you, please? Oh, no, I don't, sorry. Restricted? Yep. Got a full licence? Full licence? Negative? Ah, oh, so you shouldn't be driving them, eh? A restricted licence means he needs to be driving solo, unless a fully licensed driver's in the car. So you're able to go for your yeah, full licence? You're going to go and get it? Excellent, OK. Because the driver isn't far from home and Jane believes he's got the skills to get there safely, she lets the group continue a short distance rather than strand them on the side of the road. Once I get my licence, I email it to... Yep. This ticket will arrive in a couple of days, and then you'll get your licence in the next few weeks. Yeah, but you go for it. That'll be good. OK, see ya. Bye-bye. Follow me on Instagram. <laughs> Kids these days. With social media, you don't have to be in a band to be famous anymore. Surprisingly, like for a quiet piece of road, really, that we're stopping, have been at the 660 concert or up there doing something to do with the 660 concert partying. And they're coming home this morning a little bit dusty from last night's effort. Good people are having a good time, but, um, yeah, it's really important they get home safely. The next vehicle to catch Jane's eye isn't a limo or a car full of lads. It's a late model, lost looking Subaru and a lonely lay-by on the Clinton Highway. It's not a car that's familiar to me around here. Because there had been a late model Subaru stolen from Dunedin yesterday that we got an alert about. Bloody nice car, eh? Hello? She's pretty dark windscreens. Hey, guys. On closer inspection, it's not stolen nor abandoned. Hey, guys, want to talk to you. Are you guys OK? No, I'm good. Sorry? Yeah, we're all right. OK. Why have you stopped here on the side of the road? This really, this really tired. Really OK. Yeah. How long have you been here for? Two. Three. Stopped here. How long have you been stopped here for? Um. It's just a bit strange stopped on the side of the road, you know? Yeah. I'm yeah. just feeling really tired. And... Yeah. That's OK. That's good. It's better you stop and, and do hey, that than drive when you're tired. Pulling over to sleep is commendable, but most of the driver's answers are incomprehensible. Where have you come from? Where are you heading to? 
Just try to make it and go and just come back. Jane's not letting this go. Hey, look, I really need you to wake up a bit more and talk to me, OK? Just give us a little bit of attention, right? I, I know you're tired, but now you've been talked to by a police officer. She suspects there's more going on here than fatigue. This is all a bit weird to me. This, like, I'm going to breath test you, OK? Can I please get you to count to 10 under there? One, two, three. Right, that there's a fail, OK? Which means you've been drinking... What I'm going to do is require you to undergo a breath screening test next. The other thing is, you've driven to get here, right? Yeah. Okay, this is what I'm basing this on. It's not like you've just parked up before driving, you've driven to get here, because this is like the middle of nowhere. Being behind the wheel of a stationary car doesn't get a driver off drink driving. The EBA test will decide whether he stays or goes. What type of drink have you had? What have you been drinking? Um. I was drinking, what was I drinking? Oh, Forgetting what you were drinking is usually a telltale sign you were very, very drunk. Oh, uh, nitro. Um, I was drinking nitro. What nitro? I'm going to show my ignorance. What's nitro? Like, is it like a... No, it's like, oh, how do I explain nitro? It's like an energy vodka drink. Oh, OK. The energy has worn off, but has the vodka. How much do you think you've had to drink? What like quantity? I think it's like 1.75 litres, then I had like five cans. Am I safe to put down 1.5 litres? Yeah. And then five cans of RTDs. And five cans of RTDs. Yeah. All up, that's about three litres. Almost enough to drop a horse. The driver's fondness for the booze could cost him his 200 horsepower Subaru. That's a beautiful car. How old's that car? Mm, 2012. Oh, 2012. Yeah. yeah. It looks really cool. Well, I'm going to lose my license. Eh? Well, we don't know that. We've got to do the test. Give it grief. Nice, nice. Well, this is over. I have to throw up. Oh, oh. Same thing again, yeah. thanks. You're doing great. Long, slow go. The second test will confirm whether a night out on Nitro has completely blown his day. All right, do you want to have a look at that? 504. Mm. Okay. He's blown over the breath limit and he's been given the option of blood, which everyone gets. And he's got 10 minutes, over 10 minutes, to make that decision. So I've just told him, he, if he wants to, go back, phone someone to come and get his car, because there's a lovely car to leave on the side of the road. You wouldn't want to do that. So otherwise, if he wants a blood sample, we'll be going back to Belclutha for that. I'll just get the paperwork. While Jane attends to her paperwork, the driver attends to fertilising the embankment. <laughs> After he's finished serving up his breakfast, Jane serves him with a summons. What I will do, though, is serve a summons for you to go to court in Dunedin, and that's on a Friday for this sort of charge. So, mm -hmm. like, next Friday is the um, 13th. Not that Friday. 20th? We better go the 20th then, eh? 13th, yeah. Is that better? Going to court on Friday the 13th would have been the last thing this driver wanted. He hasn't been very lucky lately. We actually didn't even get into a club. That's a sad thing. We didn't really get into a club because it was, I think by the time we got to town, it was like shutting or the lines were too big. So we, we just, we didn't, yeah, it was just a bad night overall. Yeah. Just gotta make better decisions, yeah. The driver hands over his keys and Jane relocates him and his passenger to Clinton to wait for a sober ride. He won't be allowed to drive for 12 hours. I'm pleased they pulled over, because um, just given what they were like when we found them, they, you know, they weren't in any state to drive. It would have been better if they just didn't drive from Dunedin, really. A $6 feed and a 60-minute wait for their sober mate is the closest these boys will get to 660 this weekend. The Subaru driver went to court for driving under the influence. He lost his licence for six months and was fined $730, including court costs. The driver who lost control in the snow on Lindus Pass didn't get to Christchurch for his appointment. There were no infringements issued. He did not have insurance 
and could not afford to release the car from the wreckers. Plan your long distance journeys. Plan for changes in weather conditions, take your regular breaks, and try and share the driving when you can.